Hello and welcome. Today we will make a pinhole lens out of cardboard. And for this we will need the following tools. First of all we need a camera. Any SLR should work just fine. Next we will need a piece of cardboard. An A4 size sheet should be fine. Next we need a black sheet of paper. About A5 should be fine. And finally we also need some white or PVA glue, also known as wood glue. Before we can continue, there are a few more items we need, starting with a ruler, and if you have if you have it, a caliper will work better. Next, we will also need a pair of scissors and a hobby knife. I'm using a foldable Swiss Army knife. We will also need a pair of compasses, a pencil or a pen to mark out. And finally, we will also need a needle. So now, let's get started. Alright, so first we need to take our camera and remove the lens from it. And now we will need to measure a few things on this camera. We will need to measure the inner diameter and the outer diameter of the mount and also the location of the notch. So this is where the calipers come in handy because they are a bit more precise. And measuring the outer diameter is not that critical. Here it is 58 millimeters. Now we are measuring the inner diameter which is a bit more critical as this will give us a snug fit for our cardboard and we'll make sure the ring stays on the camera. And here it is, 47 millimeters. All right, now that, now that we have all our dimensions, we can take our sheet of cardboard and mark everything out. Starting with the inner diameter, which was 47 millimeters. Once again, this is quite a critical dimension as it will give us a nice snug fit inside the camera body and also prevent any unwanted light from entering the camera body. And now we will mark the outer di dimension which was 58 millimeters. This one isn't as critical, it just needs to be larger than the inner one and this circle will give us extra light insulation so no unwanted light enters the camera. And once again we mark the center we will, because we will need to draw circles later on. And here is once again drawing the second 58 millimeter circle. Now we can take our compass, set it to the correct size and draw the circles. Starting with the smaller one. And next up are the two bigger ones. Each time I'm setting the size of the calipers on the ruler so that we have a nice circle with the correct size. Next up we have to draw perpendicular lines in the middle of the circle so that we get a nice cross like this. This will make it easier to align the circles later. Now we need to draw rectangles in the center so the light can reach the sensor and we will make the rectangles larger with each circle and here are the rectangles with the sizes underneath them. 
the sizes are in millimeters. As a last step, I have drawn a little handle on the large on the last ring, so this will make it easier to install and remove the ring from the camera. Here are the circles cut out, and as you can see, the handle on the last one. And next, we will have to cut out the little rectangles, and here is me marking what has to be cut out. Here are the little rectangles cut out and now you can see that it will be quite easy to align with the crosses and now we need to make a little hole for the notch in the camera and here are the notches made. And this will also give us the correct alignment on the camera body and prevent our lens from rotating. Now we can start gluing and uh, once again this is where the crosses will come in handy as they will make it easy to align all of the circles on top of each other and they will have to be glued in this configuration the smallest one on the bottom and the one with the handle on top. Here are the rings glued together, and as you can see, the cross made it quite easy to align. And if we give it a little test fit, we can see that it fits quite nicely, and that the notch we made makes it quite easy to align. So now we can start working on the holder for the diaphragm, and for this we will need our sheet of black paper. We make it black because it will prevent like reflections of light. So we start by marking out a little square, which is 41 by 40 millimeters. And we will also need to mark the center of the square. And here we have the square with the center marked and with a little handle which will make it easier to hold and remove. So now we can cut this out and see how our diaphragm will look like. This is our diaphragm cut out and now I have trimmed the corners a bit to make it easier to fit I have also folded over the handle to have it double layered and make it a bit stronger. So now that we have this we can start working on the holder for it. Now we can start working on the holder for our diaphragm. And for this we will once again need our black piece of paper. And this is how the holder will look like. The two squares are 41 by 41 millimeters and the two flaps on the side are five millimeters wide. Once again the centers are marked because we will need to draw some more figures on there later. And this is our holder cut out. And now we can start drawing the holes for the light to go through in the middle. And this is why the lines have been drawn there. These are the octagons that we drew to let the light pass through and the diaphragm will come underneath this. And here I use the knife to cut out the holes. So now we can see that these holes line up quite nicely on top of each other and the lines we can use to align the holder on top of our lens we made earlier. I also trimmed the corners of the flaps so that they will fold over nicely. And now we can start gluing 
just hold it together. Here it is, glued together nicely. And it forms quite a nice pocket for our diaphragm to fit inside, as demonstrated here. And this is the final piece to our lens. So now we just need to glue this on top of the lens and make the hole for the light to go through. And for that we will need the needle, of course. So we will start by gluing the holder on top of the lens. And we can use once again the lines to align it. And here is everything assembled. So this is the lens. And if you put it on top of the camera, we have our lens. So after making the hole in the paper and taking a few test shots, I noticed a slight problem with the paper version of the diaphragm. It was leaking a lot of light and very, very blurry. So after doing some research and testing, I found that a metal diaphragm works quite a lot better. And this is made from a soda can. So that's what we will do now. In order to make this new shot, we will need a sheet of aluminum. This is a piece of a soda can, which I cut out with a pair of scissors. And we will start by marking a square with a black marker. Then we can take our rulers and the tip of our compass to scratch a line very gently. And then perpendicular, a second one. This way we will have the location for our hole and also the lines for aligning it with the holder and the rest of the lens. In order to make the hole, we'll have to take our needle and something to hit with and make a small indent on the metal, which we will then sand away with sandpaper and make a small hole. So here I'm taking the needle and using the back of my knife to slightly tap until there's a small indentation in the metal. And then we can turn our piece of aluminum around and take a piece of sandpaper and just start sanding away until we have a slight hole. And here I used the flashlight of my phone to check if we indeed have a hole. And since the light is coming through, we do have a hole. So now we can cut the piece of metal to size so it will fit. Here it is cut to size, so now it will fit nicely inside, as we can see. And I also trimmed a slight bit so it will fit better. Here are a few sample photos. This is the first one from the paper version still. And as you can see, it's quite blurry. And there's a lot of light that leaked in, but it has quite its own charm. This is the second photo from the paper version. This one is all blurry because of all the light that leaked in. You can vaguely recognize the edge of the lawn on the bottom, but yeah, it wasn't really a successful photo. This last photo is taken with the metal version, and as you can see, it's quite a lot sharper. And no light leaked in, so all in all, this is a better version. It's a bit harder to make, but I'm sure it will also last longer. So... Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what results you, results you got with this project.